Hey y'all, hey! Welcome to another post of Space and Grace, a vlog by yours truly, Tasia Wright. I'm gonna jump right in today, but I want to give you a little like, this is how I probably normally look. <laughs> I don't wanna set the expectation that I'll be dolled up every time because hashtag mom life, right? Um, but today I wanna share a little bit of my testimony with you of where I am and my exact point of my walk right now with Christ. Um, if you saw the title, it says, you know, choosing Jesus his way over my way. Um, and that's exactly where I am. But I wanna start um, at a place where this journey began. And I was up at a point in my life where um, I was working at a job um, with a company that I had worked with for several years. Um, I left the company, came back, and I was in a period where things were pretty good, some transitions started to happen, some challenges, but overall the challenges started turning for the good but I couldn't get comfortable. I kept feeling a pressing and a calling from God that I didn't really fit there anymore. Things weren't really gelling together. Um, my home life um, compared to maintaining working was a little out of whack. I always show up 110%, 150% um, for a job or anything that I'm called to do, um, but not quite was doing the same thing when it came to home. Um, and... I just started to weigh what I was doing and why I was doing it. And I started to just really come to the conclusion that this season of my life may be over. It was hard to make that decision because nothing was really going wrong at this point. Um, I loved doing what I wanted to do, but then there were some hard truths that I was comfortable doing what I was doing. It wasn't stretching me. It wasn't growing me. There was no place to grow. Even if I was looking and knocking on doors, it was not happening. And um, I needed to get out of the boat, so to speak. Um, and that reality became really real. There were still financial challenges. I was working hard, um, but financial stress was still there. And so it came to a point, was this really worth what I was putting into it and what it's costing me as far as physical stress and what it's rewarding me. It was not helping me, you know, at least even be comfortable in my life. So I kind of started to just realize like, okay, it's, it's time to, to call this, you know, quits, end it. But I wasn't quite ready to do that. And so I kind of just start talking to God and seeking him, seeking his word and trying to get some confirmation. And I kept getting them over and over again. Maybe that's not what it means. Yes, that's what it means. Maybe that's not what it means. Yes, it means because it would come to me more than once. So a season was ending for me. And even though it was kind of a hard pill to swallow, I knew it to be true. And one of the things that really helped me confirm that this may long, this is no longer the place for you anymore. It's time to move on is I can't remember if it was on social media, um, a sermon I heard or a podcast, but I ended up hearing it more than once um, where someone said, you're waiting on God, but God is waiting on you. And I heard that and it hit me in a way where I knew it was for me, but I didn't acknowledge it. I was like, I'm always doing something. I'm always working hard. I'm always striving. Can't be me. I am not, not acting. But that was just the exact thing that I was doing wrong. I was acting in my flesh and acting in what I thought was best. And God was waiting on me to surrender to him. So as he was calling me to surrender, I felt this need for rest. And I came upon this Bible verse, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And I'm going to read the New Living Translation version. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy to bear and my burden I give you is light. It was just like a light kind of resonated in my spirit. It's like, this is what God is calling me to do. This is a pivot point of change. I need rest. I don't know what yoke really means and what is the burden that God has for me. But if it's light, it's got to be easier than what I'm carrying right now. Because when I got called into rest, um, I realized that maybe I need more of him. There was a part of my life where I stepped back and decided that I needed to seek God more, but I kept praying still for the plans that I had and decided to consult him a little bit more before making actions. But at this moment, when I got called into rest, I realized that I'd never asked God, what's my purpose? What's my calling? What are you asking me to do? And I think that is where my perspective shifted, where 
I've been wanting all these things and wondering why God hasn't granted me the blessings that I believe I'm supposed to have, but they were all my plan. Even when I thought I got closer to him, I did, but it still was another layer. And that's why he was waiting on me to surrender to his will. So I did. My first step was surrender. I, I gave my notice. I gave a whole month notice and took a step back and just sat home. And it was a hard decision because I was making more money and it made things a little easier, but we were still struggling. And I definitely wasn't at a, at a place where I couldn't work. So it took a little faith of stepping out and saying, hey, I can't work. And it was a relief. It helped me really just relax for those next two months. And then when January came around 2020, a friend invited me to do a journal challenge with her um, through a pastor. She was actually local to Atlanta where I live. Um, I followed her journal plan when she gave a Bible verse for the week and you're supposed to memorize it, journal on it every day, get in the presence of God. And doing that activity, that challenge changed my life because I still now hold that practice dear and journal every day, get in the presence of God, um, just really spend time with him. So I really prioritize getting in his presence. Some days um, I may be very emotional or overwhelmed with thoughts that sometimes I don't have anything to journal. So unless something that I'm doing in a devotion, I feel like I need to note down or a dream, I do skip days, sometimes actually journaling in my journal but I never miss a day at least stopping it and praying to God and then even just sitting in his presence if I don't have anything to say. And it really was a pivot point for me. So as I took this rest, I still had this plan in my head, okay? I needed to rest to get refocused, realigned, and then I'll jump back into work in some different capacity. Maybe I need to be on a different road, different path. I was still thinking with my driven ambitious mind of how to make it work with my family um starting to realize that my family needed to be a little bit more pro of a priority and i needed to work around them versus me getting a job and trying to fit my family in around it which is what i was doing so it took a moment of me looking back and realizing why i was at this point again when i needed rest so i mentioned that I realized at one point when I had somewhat of a breakdown where I was just striving, I did understand I got so tired and exhaust, exhausted that I just went to God. I was like, I don't know what's going on, you know, help me. But then looking back, I realized I'm, this is my plan. This is what I plan to do. What, what does God really have for me? I'm not sure. I went into the world seeking a plan based on my talents my likes, my desires, but I never did cross examine them with God and say, hey, what's the purpose for my life? What do you want me to do? Where are you calling me to be? And that makes all the difference. So while I took a break in November planning to come back in January, it didn't quite seem right time to come back. Like I still was on this journey and this journey just began to transform me as I began to get in the Father's presence every day. A stripping process began in November and it just continued. Um, so I began to rest and realize that family needs to come first. I realized motherhood needs to come first. And then I started getting this unction that like, okay, you drink, you drink a lot. Maybe we should get rid of that. You know what I mean? Maybe it's time to leave that life, that lifestyle behind you. The tool that you use it as, let it go. So as of January, I decided to give up alcohol until March 1st and then take it from there. But I think I'm giving it up long term now. I still don't even make peace with it and just say, I'm done with it. But pretty much, I'm done with it. Um, I give myself space and grace that if I slip up, my father will bring me back. But I haven't had a drink since May 4th. And um, I think that's for the best. And whatever happens in the future, we'll see. But that part of my life needed to go. I think it added to some depression. I, it became a tool to help me feel better and just numb pain. Um, it really slowed me down. It doesn't contribute to my health. So it made all the sense of why God needed me to give it up. And now that I'm at this point and have walked out in some of my spiritual gifts and been reading the Bible a little bit more, I know why he called me to lay it down. So we go through January and um, up until this point, there's just so many things that's happened. Um, a spiritual transformation, rebirth, growth, stepping into spiritual gifts. Um, it was just amazing. And his comfort and his love has been there and me realigning my life and realizing what needs to be set set forth in, in in my purpose, I just began to choose him more. 
So as I'm on this uh, spiritual journey of a new birth and awakening the Holy Spirit, I just surrendered my life. Um, I said, all of you got none of me. Let me decrease. Let me walk in your path and your purpose. Let me align with you. Let me follow you and no longer ask you to bless my plans like some type of genie. You got me. You know the plans better than I do. The Bible verse, man plans his steps, but God got God's his path. I decided to stop fighting against the path he had for my life and surrender to it. And I said, here it is, God. What do you want me to do? And I, I made that commitment now. Like, let me ask about every single thing before I do it because I want to be in alignment with you. I'm tired of disappointments and I want to be in alignment with God so I could be used by God um, to help others as I help myself. And so I came across the Bible verse. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example and living. And if need be suffering or perhaps dying, because of faith in me. Matthew 16, verse 24, and that is the amplified version. So that was a little realization moment of, okay, leave my life. What is leaving my life like? Okay, I left my old job in November. Is that leaving my life? No, it's leaving your desires, it's leaving your flesh, it's leaving what the world has told you is right and what's successful. And that was a big thing for me, success, success, success. I want to be successful. I'm ambitious. I, ambitious. I have these goals. And so I had to take a moment and realize what was God and what was me. And I think that is the biggest um, stripping process you have to go to. For me, it was anyway. So yes, the stripping continue. And sometimes I got to be honest in the stripping, you just feel like, my God, what else do I need to give? You know, our sinful nature, our sinful flesh has to be denied, but there's so many layers of it that sometimes you left with this feeling of almost mourning. Like, who am I now? Who am I supposed to be? And what do I do now? What do I look like now? What do I say? What do I walk around doing? And God took me through this amazing transformation where I made mistakes and I got things right, but he was always there to comfort, love, and point me in the right direction. When I felt defeated, when I felt condemned by my own thoughts, he would take me to a passage. He would take me to a person, a even a post as simple as on Instagram passing by that would say exactly what I needed to have spoken to my heart at the moment just kept me in such comfort and peace as he guided me. As long as I bind my flesh and just sought, sought out his face and be in his presence, I always found peace somewhere, even that I didn't always feel peaceful about what was happening, but my flesh had to die and it's continuing to die. So that brought me to this point of, my life I plan and what God is putting before me. And there's little things that's been happening all along the, along the way that's giving me a hint to like, you need to go to this place. You need to do this. You no longer can do this. This is what is a priority. And it kind of came to a point, not kind of, it came to a point where I was like, okay, working diva mom or stay at home mom. And I totally resisted the stay at home mom idea. No, I, first of all, I need to work. Like we have been a two income couple family from the beginning. We, we, we relied on both of us having income, but as I had children, which we're on two, um, it's becoming more difficult for me to work and work at the level that I worked before and maintain the income in the industry that I'm in to help sustain my family. Um, so it sent me in a tailspin of did I make wrong choices? Should I have done a better career? All these things, but God just pulls me back in to not worry about the past and worry about now. But the heart of the issue is I had to deal with some of my selfishness. I had I had to be real about that. I wanted what I wanted. I wanted the life that I planned. I wanted what serves me, makes me happy, makes me feel important, makes me feel validated, what gets me my own person. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I want to give a side disclaimer of stay at home versus work mom. There's not one better than others, whatever works for your family. And if you're a blood bought believer, we know that we have to follow what God is calling us to do. And he could very well call one person to be a stay at home mom and wife and another person 
to be a working mom. There, there's no right or wrong here unless you're not aligned with God and not being obedient to him. But the vision I've had for my life, my mom worked for most of my, my childhood. I have an aunt with four kids and she was a single mom for a, a lot of my childhood. And she, uh, neither my mom or her got married until I was in high school and they all worked. My grandmother worked. I've always just had the ideals of working. I plan to work, open a business and be a successful business working mom, doing it all, conquering it all. Um, but when we have these ideas, sometimes we don't really count the cost and make a idealistic plan for that. And I realized who I thought I would be as a mom didn't really line up with my ambitious goals and I didn't really make gradual steps for that. And so it caused a lot of frustration and kept me in a, a cycle in my mind that I'm failing, I'm failing. But maybe I was putting too much pressure on myself. Maybe I wasn't really in tune with what I really needed to be doing. But most importantly, I wasn't aligned with God called me to do. So now I'm staring down this path that God may be calling me not to work, but that can't be possible because we need money. We need me to work. And I don't want to stay home. I don't want to be a stay at home mom. I don't. And that's not the life that I choose or thought I would have. Like I went to college. I work hard. I consider going back to get a master's at time, but I want my own life outside of being a mom and a wife. And sometimes now even having that momhood and wifehood sometimes feels suffocating. Um, so like I said before, I had to deal with some of the selfish thoughts in my mind, but also renew my mind in God and Jesus and what his promises are, how he having faith in him can make anything possible with man is impossible with God. Nothing's impossible. So even if my mind can't conceive what he's calling me to do, if he calls me there, his grace will cover and protect me. But it was really about me accepting this is the plan. Maybe you're not supposed to be working. And I didn't want to admit that. And that's where I am right now. Like, okay, family, husband first. Your family is your first ministry. Husband first, kids first. And then everything after that can fall in, in place. And that's tough for me because that's just not the vision that I have. But I trust God. I believe good things are coming. I have a business haven't had a super small, I mean, I haven't had a super, what I consider successful business on my own yet, but I started my LLC in 2015, 15 or 16, I think it's 15, I get it mixed up, and I've been working on it ever since, and I believe I will have a successful running business that will actually help people and build the kingdom and, you know, provide for my family, Um, but I have to shake up the timeline and shake up the plan a little bit and follow what God wants me to do. So right after verse 24, same chapter in Matthew 16, I'm reading another amplified version. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in the world for my sake will find it. That is life with me for all eternity. And that's where I am. I traded my life, what the world told me was a great life, what the world told me I could have if I follow all the rules, even manifest them to myself and believe in the secret and take all the courses, all the financial classes. I, I, I've, I've done a lot. I'm not going to say I've done it all, but I've followed the rules the world has told me that would get you to success and I haven't really found a breakthrough. Maybe I didn't do enough. Maybe it's not God's purpose for my life, which is what I believe. So I gave up my life. And you know, death in this Bible verse means, you know, sin is the wages to death. And the world leads you to sin. If you follow how they do it, it can keep you in discontentment. You can make all the world money in the world, but you won't be satisfied. So just reading and studying it and spending time with God I've been stripping myself of worldly views and getting more aligned with Christian values and being a disciple of Christ and really doing my purpose. I, I had to come into real, realization that um, my highest calling is being a mother. It's very important to raise those kids. And it's not that I never thought thought that when, before you get into motherhood, you just don't know how much it takes. So it, it, it puts you face to face with so much um, from unresolved hurt in your own past and childhoods to your own 
ugly characteristics to your own fears. It brings up so much that sometimes I personally wanted to escape them. So to think that is my biggest calling, what I have to focus on the most is like, but I'm not good at that, Father. <laughs> Jesus, help me. I feel like I felt it the other day. I want to feel like I am great at something and then come home and have do my mom work. And that's not how you should. And that's just being honest. I actually uh, ended up reading a book this year that was called Set Apart for Motherhood. When I saw it, I was like, Ugh, because I knew it was another confirmation. But I read it and the book was very helpful. And it was very encouraging. Um... So if you ask me the question of where I am currently in my walk with God, it's a faith walk. I'm walking by faith, surrendering, and being obedient to him. I'm going to read um, Hebrews um, chapter 11, verse 1 in the New King James Version, which we're probably most familiar with. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I want to go ahead and read that again but with verses 1 through 3 in the New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see through their faith. The people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. So walking by faith, we understand what faith means. By faith but not by sight. That's how we are encouraging ourselves, encouraging others. Sometimes you just got to have faith. But when you don't have a whole plan for you, I can't speak for others. For me, it freaks me out. It has freaked me out. But then I calm down when I get in the presence of God. Like, my whole plan is destroyed. Like, my whole plan is ripped up and thrown away. Do I still believe some of the things that I desire will come to pass? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. The, the qualities and the traits and the talents that I have, I think God's going to use them. And some of the arenas that I've planned for, it just isn't going in the path and the order that I thought it was. I'm here now, you know. We're in quarantine, COVID-19, however, I don't know if it's quite considered quarantine anymore, but as I was deciding to go back to work, because like I said, I planned to take a break, but now I'm going to go back into what I was doing before, but better. Um, no, I, the day I had an interview on a Friday, it just, none of it went right. The person that was interviewing me didn't show up, and I think the day before, I actually, uh confirmed it was the day we found out our kids weren't going to be going back to school for supposedly two weeks but we know we didn't go back so obviously that happened to the whole world but it also was like okay <laughs> did you stop the whole world so I couldn't go back to work father God but um it was kind of another telltale sign that maybe you won't go to work in the traditional sense that doesn't mean I can't create income in some other creative ways stay at home ways entrepreneurial ways but it just reconfirmed for me that you may be more at home than you will be in the workforce. And um, now with COVID and everything going on, we recently decided, me and my husband, to homeschool. And that took me for a whoo. It's like I've always considered it because the things that I've evolved in in my thinking, homeschool is not far-fetched for me for all the things that happen in the world from so many aspects. We don't need to get in that. But I've been considering homeschool before my daughter went to school. She was in kindergarten last year. Now as a first grader. And of course, being traditionally schooled, it's it's kind of hard to break out of that. But then COVID-19 made it a little bit easier to make that decision. And the other bonuses around keeping her healthy is also putting Christian values and biblical studies back in her school learning is a huge plus for me, um, which helps shape the decision. Um, morals. Um, more time with them, um, shaping what they actually learn and how they learn is all the pluses for it. But I had a lot of selfish, like it would be great to have kids out of the house for how many hours. It'd be great for me to be able to go work during that time, but that's not what God is calling me to do. And that's not what's best for them, especially right now. So I'm giving it two years to figure it out, reevaluate with how I'm handling it. And if God's calling me to put her back in school, um, we'll evaluate that in two years. But that puts me staying at home. That puts me putting them completely first and myself back. But that's what God calls us to do in his work. And so I'm not sure how things are going to work out. I had ideals like, okay, if I do homeschool, it's going to be at the point where my business is at this point. And I have this much money flowing in so I can hire tutors and I can still have my flexibility to go do what I want. 
that's not that ain't how it's happening <laughs> that doesn't mean it won't happen that way one day but i just want to really show you the contrast of what i plan for and what god is calling me to do and it's taking me to step out on faith step out in the dark i don't know what's next the whole world doesn't know what's going to be next as far as how the united states and the rest of the world will be functioning a year from now um but i know um this is where i'm supposed to be and how i'm aligning with god do i have little what i call temper tantrum temper tantrums in the spirit and on my mind like why god why this why did nothing that i planned worked out why did i not get it the way i wanted it and he sometimes reveals to me you weren't ready you can handle it if i would have got a business at 24 I, no one might not have liked me because i didn't have great leadership skills as far as interacting with people and, and motivating them um, in an encouraging way because um, you can't just be black and white when it comes to leadership. I didn't have the greatest money habits and still working on money habits. Maybe I would have been completely bankrupt if I would have got a business at 24 and was running it like I wanted to. Um, there's so many things that God protect us from and I understand now that he knows better than I know. His ways are not our ways. can be a frustrating Bible verse, I believe. Um, but it's the truth. He knows where the enemy will attack us, how the enemy will try to take us out. And if we stay out of his will, we don't get that protection because we're working in our own will. I love that. Um, I don't know if it's an actual Bible verse. I don't think it is. Um, if you go get it outside of the will of God, you have to stay out of the will of God to keep it. And that's so true. And it's exhausting. You don't have the help. You don't have the protection. Um, so that's where I am. I don't know what's going to happen next. My business could boom tomorrow. I could not actually get a business in the thought in the way that I thought I was going to have until I'm 40. Ah, that crushes me. But at the same time, it encourages me that his timing is better than mine. He knows what I, do, I don't know. So I have to encourage myself. I have to stay in this word and read this world. And then I have to be grateful. Let's not, let's not negate being grateful because sometimes we always look to the left you know the whole grass is greener on the other side but i've watched so many stories now of people just in miracle situations but what they had to to challenge yourself through or what they had to endure i've had nothing like that thank you jesus and i pray he keeps gracing me and showing me mercy so I've had a, a great life. I've had a lot of grace and I have to be grateful for all the bless that I, blessings that I have. I'm healthy. My husband's healthy. Um, my children are healthy. I've had, was able to have them. I have to count my blessings. I don't ever encourage anybody not to get to, not to acknowledge their pain, to understand it and get through it. But gratitude is so important. It doesn't replace being human and feeling real life pain. Cause even just because someone else's pain is greater than yours, doesn't make your pain real for yours. But we can't stay in a place where we don't realize there's so many blessings around us and so many blessings that we can't count on. Cause even though it's not there, what we're looking at, it also isn't there or there or there or not alive at all. So I do my best to focus on gratitude and that's where I am. I'm walking out in faith, in faith. And if you've ever been in a place where you just felt exhausted, you felt like your good hasn't been good enough or things are just not working out and you're just tired of doing the routine things, the religious activities that you do every day. And I don't mean religious as in spiritual and praying to God, religious routines, like going to work every day feeding your kids, picking them up, that religious routine, and it isn't fulfilling you, you may need rest. And I pray you find it. I pray you find healing in your soul. I pray you find healing for the holes in your heart. And if you don't know Jesus, I pray you find him. I pray you pray that sinner's prayer. You can pray it right now, Google it, say it, confess it. And I believe God will join you right there in that moment and you are considered saved. Um, but I just pray over anyone listening to this that you always find your healing, you find your connection, your community, and your Christ-centered purpose in life. And I thank you for listening to a little bit of my testimony. I'm not sure how often I'll do these. I'm going to be um, do my best to be Holy Spirit-led over being a planner. You know what I mean? Um, so I plan to do at least once a month. But if I feel the need to take a break or not post something, I'll always communicate. So at least in the end of the month. If not sooner, you'll get another one of these posts. And thank you for listening. I hope you all have a great day or evening or morning whenever you watch this. Talk to you soon. Bye.